Hello everyone, I'm Stephanie Brace. I'm a candidate at Cornell. And today I'm going to talk to you about vermicompost usage as an organic fertilizer. So um, to start off a little background about what vermicompost is, it's a nutrient-rich soil amendment that is produced by worms feeding on slowly decomposing materials. And your end product of a vermicomposting system should look like this material here, a dark brown um, hummus type material, very moist and rich looking. So vermicompost can be made from any type of decomposing uh, organic matter. Some of the common ones used are food scraps, animal waste, and bedding, such as pig manure, horse manure, cow manure. Sod is also occasionally used, and when this is used, it's a byproduct of the bait industry. Yard wastes are another um, vermicompost feedstock sometimes used. So, um, in the vermicomposting process, the worms that are most commonly used are Asinia fetida, or red wigglers. They're not the only type of worm used, but they're the most common. Vermicompost can be produced outdoors or indoors, depending on the system. It can be produced in small kitchen bins or very large scale, as you see in this photograph, where there is an indoor facility, it's a warehouse, and these huge bins are filled with vermicompost and worms. So if we look at one particular vermicompost. This one's from Worm Power. It's just produced in Avon, New York. And we look at the stages as it is composted. We see some things that will, um, some interesting things happening with the nutrient levels. When we have the raw dairy manure feedstock, we have relatively low levels of nutrients, higher levels of soluble salts, so we have to watch, and very high levels of ammonium nitrate, ammonium nitrogen. Then once it's thermophilically composted, or heat composted, the traditional composting method, the nutrients are um, increased slightly. Soluble salts, approximately the same. But the ammonium level decreases substantially. And then in the vermicompost process, the nutrients are increased yet again. The soluble salts are rather high, so this is something you have to watch when using this vermicompost. Then the ammonium level is higher, and this nitrate nitrogen level is extremely high. So this is something you'll have to watch for when you're using this vermicompost. Um, nitrates can be used. Um, utilized by the plant very easily, but they can also be leached into your groundwater with your irrigation. So what makes a compost, a vermicompost, organic? It can be made from allowed feedstocks, so food scraps and things like that that are allowed for organic production. Um, if you use those, your product should be fine. It can be heat composted, the thermophilic composting stage that I mentioned in the previous uh, slide. So when you thermophilically compost, you have to heat to 130 to 170 for three days in an aerated system or 15 days in a windrow system. Another way vermicompost can be certified organic is if it is kept aerated. And so for this, you don't want the heat to raise very high or else you'll kill the worms. But the material is kept aerated at a 70 to 90 percent moisture and a sufficient duration to get a finished product that will not um, contribute to contamination of the plants or the soil or the water. And when you're using manure-based products, you have to be a little more careful to not be using the raw manure directly on your plants. And the main thing is just to keep records and check with your certifying agencies. So now I'm going to tell you about two of the vermicompost trials we've conducted. 
The first one, we compared four different vermicompost sources and used these to grow tomatoes and peppers to compare the plant growth. And first, we took these four different sources and measured their um, chemical properties. So the first vermicompost, Vital Earth, uses African night crawlers. The second vermicompost, Vermin Technology, is an indoor grain-fed vermicomposting system. So there's no uh, manures or plant residue, other uh, food scraps in that material. The Terravesco is a dairy manure base from California. And Worm Power is a dairy manure base from New York. And one of the first things you see in the pH here, I'll just go down the chart, is that for Vital Earth, the pH was very low. This is almost like the level you would expect for a peat. Whereas the other three had around a neutral pH. The soluble salts, the manure-based materials had much higher levels of salts. Total nitrogen, the manure-based vermicompost had higher levels, as well as for the other nutrients, the phosphorus and potassium. Uh, worm power, in particular, has the highest levels of these. With ammonium nitrogen, worm power had a very high level, whereas the other three only had around 5 uh, milligrams per kilogram. And then nitrate relatively high levels across the board, the manure-based ones being the highest, having very um, large amounts of nitrate nitrogen. So when we used these four com uh, vermicomposts and incorporated them into a peat-based substrate at 2.5, 5, 10, or 20% by volume, we found some noticeable plant differences um, in growing tomatoes. If you look at the orange line at the top, you can see that worm power overall produced the largest plants. And this makes sense. If you'll remember from that previous chart, it had the highest levels of nutrients. The Terravesco, the other manure-based material, had decent plant growth, but still, when you apply 20% um, of that vermicompost, you are only equal to around 5% of the worm power vermicompost. So you're applying four times as much material to get a similar plant growth. And then the vital earth and vermitechnology down here um, did not perform well as fertilizers. So next we'll look at the peppers we used in these same substrates. And what you see is that with peppers, at a certain point, past the 10% application rate, there was a decrease in growth. And peppers are not as heavy of a feeder, so they don't require as high a level of, of nutrients as the tomatoes do. And again, Terravesco performing um, the second for the weight of plants, but still needing quite a bit of it to get an equal um, level as the worm power for fresh weights. And then these vital earth and vermin technology down here um, not contributing a lot to plant growth. But they could still be used as a fertilizer or a, a substrate amendment, not so much as a fertilizer. And here we have a photograph of one of the treatments, or two of the treatments, where we have the worm power on the top and the vital earth on the bottom, just so you can get a, a visual of the differences in plant growth. Now small, these, these ones on the bottom actually were. So that takes us to the next trial that we conducted, and we used vermicompost from Worm Power this time um, and applied it at 0 to 12 percent in two percentage increments by volume and planted seedlings, or planted seeds, and germinated these and let them grow for four weeks. And what we found was that for these heavier feeders, up to 12 percent performed well. They could utilize all of the nutrients didn't have a lot of detrimental effects. Lettuce, you almost see a linear um, effect. Then we tested four uh, floriculture species. 
And these didn't perform as well with the high levels of nutrients, around 6%, particularly you can see it in the ageratum and the petunia. We had a about a maximum level of growth, and then on either side of that there was a, a decrease. There was also a decrease in germination for these floriculture crops, particularly here in this graph you can see the petunia effect. And then when you apply 12% vermicompost, you noticeably statistically decreased the germination percentage. So some of the take-home messages and strategies for using vermicompost. Um, as with any fertilizer, there's no one-size-fits-all fertilizer regime. It's going to depend on your system, what vermicompost you're using, and the crops you're growing. Not all vermicomposts are equal. They have differing levels of nutrients based on their feedstock, and the feedstocks are quite variable. Some vermicomposts are more sort of suitable as substrates and some as fertilizer sources. And conducting your own in-house trials, small batch trials will be the best way you can ensure success of a new material. If you can, monitor supply, suppliers or the batches that you get for consistency and ask for analysis of the materials that you're buying in so you know whether you're getting a product that should be used as a fertilizer. So thank you very much and this completes my presentation on vermicompost.